Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist, my dear sisters and brothers. I'm seeing you after a long time. Not seeing you, but you're seeing me after a long time. Nice to be once again back uh, in connection, uh, in contact with each other. And appropriately today on the Feast of Our Lady, Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. May Our Lady bless each one of us, bless our families, family of natural family, family in the congregation, family of priests, the, the parish family. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, so that, fortified by her protection, we may reach the mountain, which is Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent all flesh before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your responses. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Together. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Your response. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
your response he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts your response he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty your response he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name he has helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to abraham and to his offspring forever your response he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name kindly rise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel alleluia alleluia blessed are those who hear the word of god and keep it alleluia the lord be with you and, and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord at that time the pharisees went out and conspired against jesus how to destroy him jesus aware of this withdrew from there and many followed him and he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known this was to fulfill what was spoken of by the prophet isaiah behold my servant whom i have chosen my beloved with whom i am well pleased i will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the gentiles he will not quarrel or cry aloud nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets a bruised reed he will not break a smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory and in his name the gentiles will hope the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord jesus christ my sisters and brothers uh, today is the feast of our lady of mount carmel and that's the reason why we celebrate the feast of mount carmel is because uh, on this day in year 1251 The tradition has it that our lady gave uh, a big scapular to the general of the Carmelite fathers Simon Saint Simon Stock and said those who wear this will be protected especially the last time sure it's not just the external it is the, the scapular was a big scapular and now it became smaller smaller many of us have our scapulars around our necks and the holy father pope pius the 20 uh, allowed that you could instead of a cloth scapular you have a medal sacred art uh, image on one side our lady on the other side and so many have that medal also this is a symbol the having a scapular is a symbol of belonging to our lady belonging to her and uh, consecrating yourself to god through mary and imitating her in everything uh, you remember that uh, when we were reading or when we had read the book of kings this was on on mount carmel already in the old testament that the prophet elias had uh, defeated the worshipers of baal remember the incident when uh, they he said okay they, they put the bulls and it said they were crying out the whole morning uh, to said, god take this take this take this to the god baal and finally at the end uh, elias uh, came and he cut the bull into two he put lots of water over it six buckets of water and finally when he prayed uh, the fire consumed and that that day after that jezebel wanted to kill him because he had humiliated the priests and uh, the crowd got so infuriated because uh, with the priests of baal that they killed some of them and that was so there, this was a mountain on which god's victory was proclaimed mountain where the prophet lies used to pray a lot and in imitation of him much later 
in the 12th, 13th century, hermits began living in caves, praying like him and dedicating themselves devotion to Our Lady, particularly during the Crusades, many soldiers went there and prayed and they lived so solitary life, silence, poverty, simplicity, humility and hearing the word of God, devotion to Our Lady and that's how the Carmelite order began. It spread all over the world instantly and we have three famous doctors of the church for Carmelite orders, no? Saint Frieza of Avila, Saint Frieza of Lycia, Saint John of the Cross and, and, and so many today also following the same spirituality I'm sure are living very saintly lives. That's the story of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and we have got devotion to her even to today. Uh, many churches at the time of First Communion they give the scapula. In some churches in Europe, at the time of baptism, they give the child the scapula. In the Ori Sri Malaba Church, gives it a time of, uh, again, a time of confirmation, uh, they give the uh, scapula. That's the uh, feast of Our Lady, and we pray to Our Lady to help us to be like her uh, disciples of Jesus in faith, hope, and charity. I'd like to briefly comment also on the gospel. We are reading the gospel of Matthew. Uh, these days and uh, we've got uh, this incident very when you read it over and over again it's got so much meaning and a very tender gospel when you it describes Christ uh, Christ's attitude Jesus attitude now Jesus had uh, cured a man with a withered hand in the on the Sabbath day they were very angry with him and uh, they, they the very first line is the Pharisees went out conspired against Jesus how to destroy him. They wanted to kill him. And then Jesus did not confront them. Jesus' attitude was, he didn't, was not reckless. He said, okay, I'll teach you. And I went around. He withdrew from that place, went to another place and carried on doing good. His hour had not yet come. He had to fulfill his mission, preaching the word of God, spreading the kingdom of God, and finally going to the cross. And then he, uh, over here we have what well, the prophet Isaiah is quoted over here and uh, this is a commentary really Jesus doesn't say this Matthew says that he did all this to fulfill what Isaiah says so this insight of uh, Matthew's and what is Jesus he there's lots over here if you take this passage once again chapter 12 14 to 21 of Matthew you can and meditate on it but I'll just pick out one or two uh, small points one is he will proclaim justice he will teach justice. There are different translations uh, in the, the Bible. He will teach justice. He will, what is justice? Uh, each one is due. Justice towards God, justice to a man. Uh, equality, not cheating, honesty, mercy, compassion. And then it says the beautiful passage I like so much. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not quench. A reed which is uh, already broken, almost, uh, he will not uh, harm it more. So the, Jesus always was encouraging, always was never uh, discouraged people, strengthened the weak, helped the downtrodden, uh, gave greater hope to everybody. So no one was uh, crushed by Jesus. This, this is the, was the attitude of Jesus and should be our attitude also if we are disciples of Jesus. This was also today's Saturday, Our Lady Mount Carmel, also Our Lady. She learned from Jesus. She was his perfect disciple, always encouraging, always giving hope, always never really rejecting people, allowing them to come and encouraging them to come to Jesus. And in moments of weakness, to strengthen them. That really is the meaning of this gospel. That's what Our Lady does. Let's run to her, pray to her to help us to be like Jesus, but tell, help us also that if we are smoldering wicks or bruised reeds, that we should not be crushed, but always strengthened to grow again. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
by the mischievous water and wine, we come to share his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. To be right and just, our duty and our salvation. To praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. Especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even in, to earth's ends you have done great things, extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be equipped to eternal life, praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. To you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us be with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, and your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
as we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we, who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Senate, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God bless each one of you. Happy feast to all the Kamal, Kamalan, Kamalin, Kamal, whatever other derivatives from uh, Kamal. And all the Kamalite sisters, fathers, very happy feast. Pray for us and we pray for you. And uh, I'm happy, very, very happy, really, uh, to once again connect with you. Uh, but I was told now that this chapel will be, has got to be, uh, undergo little repairs. And uh, I'll be seeing you. I'll see you tomorrow from the cathedral. Uh, and and uh, on Monday, I mean, uh, I'm not sure uh, where they, uh, which uh, altar. I'm searching for an altar to offer sacrifice. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be connected. But we'll be, this might be out of action for a couple of weeks. Uh, I hope it's not very long. And, but we'll find another place from which I'll say Mass. God bless you, and once again, happy feast, and see you tomorrow. God bless. Have a nice weekend.